Welcome back, 80 fam. If you're new here, my name's Amanda, my boyfriend's name's Daniel, and we are 80 vlogs. <laughs> also, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and join the family. We'd love to have you here. We are a community. So today, I wanted to talk about the second time I got robbed. If you guys didn't know, I've been robbed three times. But um, the first one is already up on our channel. I reacted to the news report of me getting robbed. <laughs> So let's get into the second one. So I was working at the bank at the time. And it's funny because a lot of people tell me when I tell them I got robbed at the bank, they tell me that, oh, I thought that just happened on movies. I didn't know people actually robbed banks. Well, they do. <laughs> if you're curious, they do. Because I actually got robbed twice in six months last year. So if you guys want, I can also make a story time about the time I got robbed for a third time. But until then, grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's talk about the second time I got robbed. At this time, it was very slow in the bank and you know, we had like the ropes where like it makes sure that the line stays, you know, a line. But because nobody was there at the time, I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna make this customer come in and walk all the way through the line if I can just take them now. So me trying to do the right thing and take care of customers and do my job, I told this guy, I was like, oh sir, you don't have to go in line. You can just, just come to my line, I got you. And he walks up and mind you, everyone was still wearing a mask. The mask mandate was still in place, like stuff like that. So the fact that he was wearing a mask did not catch me off guard because everyone was wearing a mask. And so he came to my teller counter just to set the scene. You know, sometimes when you go to the bank and they have like those bandit barriers, like that glass in front of the teller, we didn't have that. Like we had like a shield, like I'm, I'm literally not exaggerating, like maybe like this much that prevented from COVID, you know, just in case, you know, but like if I put my hands over here, like it's a hundred percent open. Like we're not like protected from people jumping over the counter, if that makes sense. So he comes up to my counter and he says nothing to me. Oh, and he puts a note on the counter. And I looked down and it said, this is a robbery, give me all the hundreds and fifties. And let me tell you, I wasn't as scared this time as I was the first time, because the first time I was like 100% alone. This time I didn't have people like with me, but there was people like, in the bank so if something were to happen someone would see so i was like wow like what are the chances of this happening two times who would have thought that it eventually happened a third but anyways so i was like oh my gosh like that's crazy so i just i go to grab out my money that he had asked for because he specifically stated you know 50s and hundreds but my drawer was very low at the time so I had maybe a couple hundred, like three, five, so a very little amount of hundreds. And so I gave him what I had, which then he responded. This is the first time he had talked. He said, that's it. And that's, that's guys, that's when I started to feel a little nervous because I wasn't trying to play him. That genuinely was how much I had in hundreds. And I don't think I had any 50s, but he wanted more and I didn't have it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what is going to happen if I can't give him what he wants? So I'm like brainstorming my head, like trying to think real fast. And so I kind of like grabbed some 20s and I just like put them in the counter. So he sees like, you know, I'm not trying to play. Like, here you go. And like, I'm starting to like go into panic mode. So I hand him some 20s and then I'm going for my 10s and 5s. And I look up and he's already turning to leave walking out and this is the craziest part so I hope you guys made it this far in the story because this is when the story gets like crazy so he leaves and I look at the guy behind me which is kind of like a manager role and he's supposed to be watching over the tellers to make sure nothing happens well he had no idea that I had just got robbed like no idea which Looks like someone wasn't doing their job, but not my business. Anyways, so 
I look at him and I mouth to him like, I just got robbed. And he like looks at me and I'm like, I just got robbed. And he was like, oh my gosh, you did? And I was like, yes, like, I'm not, I'm not joking. Like I did, like, what are we gonna do about this? Like, and so there was other tellers on the line, but by coincidence, someone had just taken lunch. So it was like teller, blank spot, me, blank spot, teller. So I was like kind of isolated. So none of the other tellers had heard that I got robbed because first off he didn't really speak to me and second off no one was next to me to see that i was like giving away my cash and not actually doing a transaction so once i tell the guy that i had just been robbed then we lock down the branch and we call 911 you know because the cops have to come they have to investigate everything all of that but at this point the guy's already gone so that's cool but i go and i talk to the guy we have something called, or we had, I don't work there anymore, but we had something called a lobby leader. And a lobby leader is the person that stands in the lobby, <laughs> ironically enough, and they make sure what you need and they make sure that you get to the right area. So say if you need a banker, they make sure that you're not gonna wait in line to see a teller. So at this time, the lobby leader was standing at the front door greeting everyone. So what he tells me is that guy that robbed me, he had no idea that he had intention of robbing us. Like he was a pro. When he walked in, the, the lobby leader said, you know, hi, how are you today, sir? Like, what can we help you with? He completely is like, oh, do you have cashier's checks? I'm looking to get a cashier's check. How's your day? This guy that robbed me completely had a full on conversation with the lobby leader. And so that leads the lobby leader to think, oh, there's nothing suspicious about this guy. He's just going in to get a cashier's check. So then he comes to me, robs me, and then leaves. He never put the cash in his pocket. The cash was like in his hand. He was like holding it in his hand, all crinkled up. Now, the lobby leader said he had noticed that the guy was leaving with cash in his hand, but he didn't think anything of it because since the guy had already told him he was getting a cashier's check, he was under the assumption that maybe the guy didn't have the proper identification or the name, or there was some reason that this guy couldn't get a cashier's check. So he kind of just like left in a hurry, thought nothing of it. So when I tell this lobby leader later, you know, that guy robbed me, he starts putting the pieces together and realizing, you know what, that didn't make sense. That's so crazy that he was so calm and collected when coming in. And I was like, yeah, that is pretty crazy. But honestly, it was pretty smart of him. Like, I, I mean, honestly, like when you act sketch and you try to avoid people, of course, people are going to look at you. If you're making conversation, you just blend right into the crowd. So I remember my um, co-worker, the lobby leader being like, I remember him having like a tattoo on his, on his chest, which is funny because this guy was wearing like a long sleeve shirt, but there was like a little pieces poking out. So he gave that description or whatever to the police. And then later on, I get robbed a second time, six months later, and I'm trying to look up if the current robbery that I had just experienced, the third one, was online and when doing so I came across the article of the second guy that robbed me the guy that robbed me with the note had been found and he was in jail and I was like mind blown because they tell you would you be able to identify this guy if you saw him on the streets and I thought I could like I understand he was wearing like a face mask but I could see his eyes I could see his hair I could see his body type I was for sure I could identify him on the streets once they sh once I saw his like mug shot and I saw what he actually looked like, it's it's so crazy to me that he looks so different without his mask that I could have seen him on the street. I could have helped him at my bank if he wasn't wearing a mask and I would have had no idea. Like that honestly, that thought is like kind of scary, but I'm glad they found him. Um as for the third guy, that is a different story, so I'm not going to get into that. But um, please comment down below if you want to hear the third story. If you haven't seen the video about me getting robbed the first time, please 
click the link, watch that video. I react to the news report of me getting robbed. That, that was ridiculous, the way they portrayed that whole story, but what can you do? <laughs> but yeah, so thankfully in my second robbery that I had, I did not get hurt. Everything was fine, but I'm gonna tell you right now that I think getting robbed the first time and not properly handling what I needed to mentally and then getting robbed a second time and then getting robbed a third time six months later I think that's what really put me where I am now with my like complex PTSD my paranoia my anxiety I think for happening so many times that my brain has just accepted that you can't trust anyone and that there's more bad in the world than good and I don't know it's it's really crazy and I, I don't think that is the truth I don't think that there is more bad than good in the world it's just that's how my brain wants to try to process things because every time I let my guard down something else happens so I'm like afraid to let my guard down but I also don't want to get too much into that either because I want to make another video for you guys um, reacting to a video I made a while ago, it's called, I think, How I'm Really Doing? I don't know, I'll have to look it up. It was when I was at a very, very low point in my life, and I honestly think I was crying in it, and it's been a year since then, so I want to react to that video. I kind of want to touch bases with you guys about how I'm doing now, if I'm doing better, I've been kind of putting it off because it's hard for me to see myself in that state. You know, like, it makes me sad to see other people sad. But seeing myself from an outsider's perspective, feeling those same emotions, I feel like it's going to be really hard for me. But I want to do it. I want to be transparent with you guys. I want to be vulnerable. And I kind of feel like it might be a healing moment for me to see how far I've come. So that's coming to, like I told you guys, we're going to be more consistent. I've been doing my best to pump out more content for you guys, have it be genuine, good quality content. I hope you're enjoying it just as much as I'm enjoying filming for you guys. Um, make sure if you haven't already, like this video, comment, subscribe, join the AD fam. We'd love to have you. Um, yeah, if there's anything that you have any questions about, if it's about this video, if it's about something random that you just want to talk about in the comments, comment down below. I will for sure reply back to you. I always do. Honestly, sometimes you guys tell me, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you replied. And like, I can't believe you commented. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys make my day more than I make your day when you comment. Like, it makes my whole life when you guys comment. Like, it shows me that you guys really are like invested and I love it because... I love you guys. Come on now. <laughs> but anyways, um, I actually have to leave for work soon. So I got to cut this off. But um, I love y'all. I will see you next time. I hope you guys have a good day, a good night, whatever time you guys are watching this. I hope you are thriving and surviving. And until next time, Andy fam, bye.